Uh, Mr. Press, yes. Which one is yes? This one? Yeah. This one? Okay. All right. Um, good day, everyone. Um, thank you for your time for coming to the talk today. Um, today we have Dr. Aiko Yakeno uh, from Tohoku University. Um, she's an assistant professor at the Institute of Fluid Science, okay, um, and which is belong to the, and she's also belong to the Aerospace uh, Fluid Engineering Lab. Um, she obtained her uh, PhD from Tokyo University under Professor uh, Nobuhide Kasagi. Um, he was the founding member of PSFP and the chief editor of Journal Heat and Fluid for, for, for a while. So, and you, you were his last student, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, before he's retired. Okay. Um, her interest is in flow dynamics and flow control and surface roughness. Okay. Um, she won the, the prestigious Riumon Prize in 2022. Um, uh, it's one of the awards uh, by, the, by the Japan Society of Fluid Mechanics that given to young researchers. Um, she was also the youngest recipient of the Frontier Award by the Japan Society of Mechanical Engineering, the Fluid Engineering um, Division. So it's quite impressive um, um, awards um, um, in the last few years. So look forward to, to your talk. Thank you for introduction. Yes, uh, let's begin to my uh, presentation. Okay. Firstly, I talk about my uh, introduction. I am graduated the University of Tokyo, 2012, supervised by the past professor Nobuhide Kasagi. At that time, my research topic is on a spawn-wise wall oscillation. For more than 10 years, I have spent uh, the research on. Then now I am belonging to uh, an uh, aerospace fluid engineering laboratory at the Institute of Fluid Science, Tokyo University. And we are working on uh, there, a computational and experimental fluid dynamics and their integration for the innovation, safety, and creation aerospace systems. Uh, there are several uh, keywords of our research. In our research group, a uh, staff is Professor Shigeru Obayashi and me and others, uh, eight people in total for staff. And students are four in doctor, uh, 13 in master, and three in bachelor course. Okay, one of my uh, research topic now is on drug reduction uh, by the scheme such like remineralization. Uh, we are working uh, of three-dimensional complex uh, transition mechanism uh, around the swept wing, like uh, this simulation. And also small roughness effect on the traditional things uh, for the, this uh, transition wave. And I will explain this research uh, contents uh, more in detail in the following slides. Uh, additionally, we are also doing some research on accurate forecasting of atmospheric turbulence. Uh, this is one example to reproduce uh, the uh, airplane shaking uh, dangerous air turbulence. This is used for an open campus event. This is a flight simulator, open campus event in Tohoku University. Uh, this booby demonstrates uh, the airplane shaking due to the equia air turbulence. This is, uh, yes. And also this vortex uh, visualization uh, is to investigate the turbulence to make an airplane unstable when it takes off and runs in the Haneda airport. And we also investigate some fundamental flow physics using wind tunnels. We developed a special tool like a magnetic a suspension and balance system, MSBS we call, to float a model by magnetic force to measure the drag uh, directory. And we also you, uh, prepared some uh, hot wire measurement system in a small wind tunnel to measure some boundary layer profile over the roughness. But it's very small and yeah, uh, very uh, not accurate one. <laughs> and also, additionally, in our institute, there is a larger wine tunnel with a low tolerance level one. 
recently we tested the laminarization device, such as like DRE, discrete roughness element, to the cross flow instability. This work is based on in a collaboration with JAXA and MHI, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry, through NEDO project. We prepared a flat plate with a pressure gradient object installed at the roof and confirmed the effect of the device on it, like this. The DRV device is set, the roughness is set in upstream. I also introduced our uh, researches of application of data simulation. Okay, this work is based on a collaboration research with a company, Hitachi, if we want to obtain wind energy efficiently. Okay, we have been considering to fly drones to obtain the local information and apply the data simulation to the atmospheric forecasting simulation. To find the optimal location for the data simulation, we consider observability in the field of control. Here we assume observability uh, is calculated by the minimum eigenvalue of empirical observable ground matrix and identify the vocation with the smallest eigenvalue. The formation is shown as these equations like this. The, the location with high uh, observability will improve the data assimilation. These figures these figures uh, show the location with high observability as blue area like this. And the white figure shows the location with high assimilation accuracy. We see they are very high, highly correlated each other. We also apply data assimilation of shriven image of jet. This is also from the collaboration we work with a denso cooperation. This is to increase the jet penetration and, and combustion model simulation. Uh, here we uh, apply the Shuiren image velocimetry. We call it SIV to obtain the velocity profile in two dimensional. This approach improves the data assimilation uh, results. Then finally, uh, we can use data assimilation for run uh, model coefficient two. We have PIV data uh, downstream of a cylinder model. This is, uh, then uh, that is floated in MSPS, uh, settled in the wine tunnel. Then we apply data of PIV uh, to obtain the optimal run model parameters to reproduce the PIV without the most. This figure shows the results, the time averaged streamlined velocity without tuning uh, by the uh, data simulation. And the below figure show uh, that uh, with parameter tuning by data simulation. Uh, some some uh, characteristics are uh, not uh, reproduced, but that, this is because of the limitation of the SA model. Now I will move to the topic of the standardized wall oscillation control. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to explain the background as this is maybe something like to preaching to Buddha, like this. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows about the self-sustaining and regeneration cycle of wall towers, uh, consisting of uh, the strict structure generation and meandering then a uh, streamwise vortices occurring, kind of. And then also the streamwise vortex uh, generates Reynolds shear stress near the wall and are the main cause of frictional drag in turbulence. And streamwise vortices are caused by destabilization, meandering of the streak structure, it is explained. And recently, the generation of streak structure is proposed to be explained by the amplification of turbulent energy for a finite time. This is called transient energy growth. Uh, this is one of the work that Devarano and the next professor uh, added the nonlinear effect of brain of shear stress. They obtained the optimal uh, transient growth mode that is called. Uh, 
consistent with the DNS result. Then the spawn-wise wall oscillation control achieves maximally 40 to 50% drag reduction. However, the input energy is very considerable, large, and uh, the net energy gain is only uh, five uh, conventionally. Might be 10 years ago, we uh, compute the case uh, changing from temporal to spatial periodicity. And we found the maximum net energy gain increased from five to 10. Therefore, I uh, think the spatially periodicity had a potential more than the temporal one. The control method was applied as wavy or sinusoidal rebret uh, that is recently tested by JAXA. The drug reduction phenomena itself is very uh, is of great interest. Then also there is some interesting fact that this control way would be originated from uh, some observation observation of Reynolds stress reduction in the three dimensional uh, boundary layer around the swept wing experimentally. Maybe Bradshaw and Ponticos, uh, 1985. Then uh, we investigate the drug reduction uh, over the wall oscillation uh, in a turbulence field. Uh, an increase in Reynolds shear stress equals to an increase of frictional drug. Here I show uh, the integral equation of, uh, for bulk mean velocity. Uh, because uh, when we consider the pressure gradient is constant in a turbulent channel, we obtain the drug reduction effect as the velocity increase. So FIK identity is uh, famous for that uh, relationship, but that's, that equation can be converted to the bulk mean velocity increase. As you know, the streamlined vortices near the wall are the main cause of Reynolds shear stress generation. So I did my first trial to clarify the mechanism to reduce the drag by focusing on the streamlined vortex. Firstly, we obtained the state of the flow around the streamlined vortex by conditional sampling. We use the second invariant of the velocity gradient tensor and we determine the center position of the each streamlined vortex and average the flow around it for each control phase. Here we get results like this, uh, but you will see that uh, the situation is very difficult to explain uh, because the vortex and Q2 event weakened when the direction of shear in the Stokes layer and the direction of the rotation of the vortex were the same. And strengthened when the direction of shear and the direction of rotation were different. After much so, I came up with the following possible explanation in the next slide. That is a streamwise vortex shooting. Naturally, without control, as you know, the streamlined vortices are mainly responsible for energy redistribution via pressure string correlation term. That is because the streamlined vortex is tilting in the span wise direction with inclination a little bit up. When the old oscillation generates the Stokes layer, streamlined vortex is forced to be tilted to the other direction that restrain with distribution. Therefore, I explain the streamlined vortex becomes weak and drug reduction occurs at the opposite direction of the Stokes layer share. I compare the relationship between these three values. Like the first is the streamlined vortex tilting angle, the second is the pressure strain correlation term in the conditional sampling. The third is the change in the Reynolds shear stress at each phase. 
the figure shows the value in phase, there was a high correlation with each other. Here we know the change in Raynaud's shear stress is caused by the tilting of the vortex. Then the reason why the friction drag increases in the case of long period can be explained. When the control period is strong, energy redistribution is promoted and even happens in a certain phase, uh, totally the drag is increased. Additionally, I would like to explain my uh, some idea to predict the drug reduction effect. Uh, let's think uh, what happens to the streamer's vortices if the original mean velocity gradient moves. I, I found some fact. The streamer's vortex falls to the mean velocity gradient but its tilting angle is slightly delayed with respect to the change of it. Then I consider if the rate of energy transfer is constant, then the amount of energy loss due to delay depends on the acceleration of the changing mean velocity gradient. Then I calculate the plot the phase change in Raynaud's shear stress and the velocity shear acceleration at the streamwise vortex. I found these, these are correlated very much, not only the velocity, uh, not only the peak uh, phase, but also the amount of reduction. That is very interesting. When using the proposed prediction method of velocity shear acceleration, the flow rate increases due to drug reduction could be predicted well in a wider range of control period than, uh, than the conventional prediction method like this. The red colored ones for the uh, longer time period control cases, the conventional prediction method cannot predict well, but the new method can uh, predict for even the control period is wrong. Might be this is the result focusing on a streamized vortex, tilting, and delay in the research, I think. Then I also investigate the ball oscillation effect uh, on the linear transient amplification in a turbulent channel. The optimal period of control is uh, around 100, you know, which corresponds to the time to reach the length of the strict structure of 1000 when the advection velocity is about 10 on the viscosity scale. So the optimal wavelengths uh, and, and the optimal wavelengths for the spatial periodic control is also almost 1000. So we thought uh, the awakening of the strength of the strict structure should be uh, investigated. And the weakening of the strict structure will suppress secondary instability. And as a result, streamers vortex, which are the main cause of drug, would be less likely to occur. Uh, from result, uh, firstly, I confirm the energy amplification becomes lower than that of no control case. It was shown that the growth of strict structure was suppressed by control, even uh, T equal 75 optimal uh, for the, uh, uh, this, this uh, condition and longer time period case too. However, the, as you can see, uh, the present linear analysis does not predict the optimal frequency. The yeah, optimal should be a 75 case, but longer time period uh, cause a smaller streak amplification. So the drug reduction mechanism is explained not only by not only this linear um, amplification uh, for the strict generation, but maybe also 
the nonlinear effect due to the streamlined vortex. Uh, this is one of my conclusions so far for the spanwise wall oscillation. Okay, I would like to introduce uh, my current research topics in my laboratory. So if a uh, laminar flow uh, can be maintained with 50% uh, of the swept uh, main wing, uh, large aircraft, uh, uh, the total uh, drag can be reduced by approximately 10%. So the laminarization is one of the uh, hot topic uh, in the aerospace engineering. Then also essential technique uh, for next generation uh, supersonic aircraft. The flow at the leading edge of the swept, wick, swept back wing uh, gravely affects the transition process and has been studied for more than half a century. Uh, but many points remain unclear now. We are doing some investigation for the transition scenario uh, in the leading edge uh, by a direct numerical simulation. With artificial disturbance, uh, at, uh, of roughness, a uh, wall roughness. Uh, and we observed the generation of stationary wave that is known in experimentally, uh, but also we found some traveling way that are the source of the transition. Furthermore, we show the possibility that the occurrence uh, can be explained by the transient amplification process of energy. The wavelength of the structure in DNS is uh, consistent with the maximum energy transient amplification uh, at a finite time. Uh, yeah, then also uh, some uh, test. Uh, I, I show some PFD uh, results for the experiment. Also, we can uh, do such things. Uh, additionally, uh, uh, I am also doing some uh, numerical simulation on uh, transition delay effect. Uh, this is investigation of the two dimensional wavy uh, surface uh, on the transition. Uh, as you see, uh, among these wavelengths, uh, some uh, wavelengths delay transition like this. Uh, in, in this two-dimensional wavy uh, surface, is, uh, compared to the smooth surface, it generates drag more than the smooth surface. Uh, on the other hand, we tried uh, another more complicated three-dimensional uh, roughness. Then we obtain some uh, drug reduction uh, effect uh, more than smooth surface uh, on that uh, roughness surface. That's, that mechanism itself is now under, uh, under uh, investigation, but uh, I show some uh, statistics like this. Uh, upper figures show uh, the CF uh, gain. Then the below figures are the turbulence kinetic energy. And these values are decomposed uh, into a total and uh, total to a TS wave uh, statistics and other 3D statistics. Uh, compared to a uh, flat Compared with flat rate cases, our DMR uh, can reduce the CF and uh, turbulence kinetic energy like this. There is some uh, investigation. It uh, depends on the what kind of wave uh, rings should be included to the roughness kinds of things are uh, now uh, we are discussing. Okay, I will summarize today's presentation. Uh, I mainly introduced the um, research on frictional drag reduction control, uh, focusing on wall turbulence. Uh, 
uh, things. These are uh, some keywords I introduced today. Uh, uh, these are the lists uh, of papers related to the uh, contents introduced today. I also show some uh, visualizations, uh, DMR things, and wavy roughness one and graph wave one. If you uh, see, uh, the transition occurs uh, quickly in our DMR more than the flat plate. But uh, you can see the uh, vortex structure uh, motion is restrained over the roughness. That is interesting. Uh, there is also some uh, statistics of Venus shear stress. This is averaged in time and span wise. This is flat plate one, TS wave uh, uh, input, then uh, generate Venus shear stress in downstream. The wavy roughness is here. The uh, penalization method and body fitted grid one is compared and our DMS like this. Yeah, we also uh, seeing some uh, uh, things. Maybe uh, we can explain the mechanism by uh, using some energy budgeting. And also we found some dissipation uh, is encouraged around the uh, roughness. Yeah, we are thinking now, yeah, there I got some uh, response uh, today's morning uh, from the paper. So please check the following paper. Yes, that's all. Thank you. Question for IT, please. What does the DMR look like? What? Uh, very, it's the sandy, uh, sa sa sand grind uh, surface like. Yeah. And it's, it's completely homogeneous? Homogeneous, yes. Yeah. I didn't get the, the roughness. Is it the you introduce it? Sorry, the, the oh, both. The... Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah, yeah you, I scanned the sandpaper and also I uh, yeah, tried the uh, artificial disturbance like this. Um, for the for the roughness itself, um, the sandwich, do you know the uh, the grid? Or, I mean, like, um, what's the grid? Uh, what type of is it like? You got it just in a normal, um, and then you just scan it just in a normal yeah. paper. Yeah. Um, what grid is that? Do you remember? P something, P thirty six, P forty, or something. Ah, it's <laughs> one thousand. Yeah, you know, but uh, adjust to the numerical simulation, we can uh, resolve. Mm. So maybe uh, more bigger than the experiment. Yeah, we also did some experiment on uh, the sandpaper, but we, uh, in case maybe the, the scale was very different, maybe. So now we are uh, trying to do some a more larger roughness case <laughs> in, in our experiment. But yeah. But, but yeah, TS wave generation itself is very difficult in our wind tunnel, you know, small one. Richard, um, can, can I ask a question about one of your other topics? Yes. The, the data driven engineering. Okay. Um, so, so you were modifying the SA model yes. based on your POD data. Yes. Um, so, so how exactly did you do that? I mean, you, you took POD data from one case. Yeah. And then you, um, 
So you, you change your coefficients. Yeah, yeah, coefficient. Yeah. What, what method do you use to, to change your coefficients? And, and do you do that as a kind of a spatial field? And then you have spatially depending. Ah, uh, yeah, details are not explained here, but uh, we use the Kalman filter. A uh, Kalman filter method. Uh, that is one of the uh, typical uh, method for the data assimilation. Then uh, we uh, obtain the uh, kinds of iteration of three diagonal things in the linear system. Uh, we uh, put a, 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 a flow information first, and also uh, the parameter should be uh, is what, uh, one of the variable for uh, optimization. Then uh, we uh, see the difference of the uh, true value and the uh, numerical value and to reduce the uh, error, uh, the system should be converted. Then we obtain the uh, uh, parameter, uh, optimal parameters set, parameter set to then we uh, use that parameter, then iterate, then obtain this. But if you wanted to now do a different case, um, yeah. like a different Reynolds number or a different, you only, could you use the same set of coefficients or uh, how does it work in terms of predicting a new case? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It depends on the what kind of flow a characteristic is governing that a profile. Maybe this uh, a cylinder is very uh, aspect ratio is high. In this case, separation is the main reason for, to pro, to make this profile. Maybe such kind of separation governing flow physics can be uh, predicted by the tuning tuned one, but. If the aspect ratio is low, then separation and the attachment occur. Then, uh, yeah, other other physics will uh, play an important uh, play an important role to uh, rule. Uh, this this tuning is not working. Maybe so. In I uh, thank you. In yeah, maybe in in industry. Uh, maybe aerospace engineering, we do not see, uh, we do not obtain so much a uh, change in the form. Maybe 1% uh, or 2% in performance increase is expected. In, in that case, that it, that's kind of a uh, tuning is very useful. Maybe drastical change is not expected for the engineering. So it might be useful. Mm. Let's yes. Can I come back to the, the distributed micro roughness? Roughness. In the, so, if I understand it, the, there's a very fine scale roughness texture. Yes. The transitions the causes an earlier transition of the boundary layer, but then when the boundary layer transitions, it has lower. Yeah. Has some lower turbulence level, lower lower turbulence level. Uh, yeah. like this and, and so the, to come back to the scale of the the roughness once the flow is transitioned to turbulence can you estimate the size of the roughness in the viscous units uh this is traditional state so the viscous scale uh, scaling is not uh, precise in this case i yeah. saw it but yeah it, that is uh, around uh, seven for the grain size. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, plus seven. Yeah. But the Ramina, Ramina uh, profile. Towards the downstream end, the profile is quite turbulent, right? Uh, yes, in turbulent, yeah, yeah. Around here, yeah. maybe, yeah, seven, seven, eight, seven. Just when you do that fine roughness, how do you how do you grid your simulation? Do you or do you use the most boundary method? What technique do you need to resolve the roughness? Yes, uh, I tried. Uh, 
two, two methods, like volume penalization, like an immersed boundary method by using the orthogonal grid. Another one is body fitted one to use a general axis. Then, it's homogeneous, but it's not random. It has a, it has a pattern to it, so then you can, you can body into it. Uh, is that is that what? Uh, no, it's homogeneous. Homogeneous but regular. Is it or is it random? Like sandpaper is random. Yeah. Is, is yours structured or like you know is it in terms of sinusoidal in both directions? Yes. It is. I uh, uh, for the sinusoidal one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's wavy. Okay. The bottom one's just kind of the actual scan. Yeah, I know. That's and then you body fit. So you just map the you 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 that's a very complicated uh really exercise around around the mm -hmm. DNR case. But you've got all these irregular. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what, yeah. What is the main factor I we we are now investigating? Yeah, by putting only one uh, wavelength, like three dimensionally distributed, but it causes only one wavelength, like only one wave. Kinds of investigation. We now is. This effect may be very special to the TS wave uh, transition. One is TS, the, one is the uh, wavelengths of the uh, streamwise direction should be uh, smaller than the TS wave one. And also uh, the spanwise uh, distribution should be uh, easily to break the, the uh, TS wave before early stage before in yeah before become large enough so how many reports for the dmr dmr uh, uh, yeah yeah oh uh, maybe uh, can i check <laughs> yeah yeah Maybe we can check it um, after this. Um, the the, the, the okay. I don't, we don't have to put it. Okay. <laughs> we can have a chat after this. Okay. <laughs> um, Okay. So you will not comment on the bending of the vortex structures? Yes. Have you looked at the phase aspect of it? Like what phase of the cycle that happens to Yes. Phase. Phase, yes. Is this? About okay. this. So the attempting the vortex structures. Yes. Did you investigate which phase of the cycle that uh, happens in this? Oh, uh, uh, which phase of this phase of scalability occur at the state of certain phase? Mm, like uh, this due to events? Uh, decreasing so the tuning angle uh, becomes a, a certain uh, direction. But also, yeah, we are discussing with uh, a, a Simon. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe we now we uh, all. The, the viscosity and uh, maybe the uh, linear amplification cannot explain whole scenario of the drug reduction. Maybe we have to consider the, uh, the viscosity change at each phase. Yeah. 
that is based on the streamwise vortex uh, modification, maybe. Um, there's a question in the Zoom chat, so I'll just read that out um, from Michelle and from Manchi. But the other console plots on the right in the DA slide, the data exploration slide, so it's asking, are they of the same quantity as that in the PID data plot? So the color levels are a little bit different. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so I think yeah this is, is minus 0.5 to 0.5. Uh, this is uh, minus 0.1 to 0.1. Uh, a little bit different. So there are two. So the one on the right is the same. Yeah. Any more questions? No? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So the DA was not, you were actually part of the solution or was like polymer or scale? I don't know. <laughs> like a couple of polymer scale, you were part of the solution? Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, maybe. Mm, dissipation is, yeah, contribute to decrease the energy near the wall. The realm zone is tiny. Mm -hmm. The realm zone is really small. Yeah, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, based on the uh, boundary area thickness at in bed, that's 3,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Any more questions from anyone? And so, uh, uh, first, let's thank Aiko for, for, her, for her presentation. Thank you, Aiko. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to be here for the next um, two days. Um, so if anyone wants to have uh, more talk with her about, um, about, about